Hi, we're Triton Your Tech, and today we, we bring to you our latest project, the Aramus, an EMG mouse. You may be asking, why do we even need this technology? What's wrong with the traditional or even the ergonomic mice? While many of us spend countless hours on our computer for work, study, or leisure, this prolonged use often leads to issues such as hand cramping, neck strain, and overall discomfort. This is especially trying for individuals with limited mobility, such as those with carpal tunnel syndrome, repetitive strain injuries, or even conditions like Parkinson's disease. In recognition of these needs, various solutions exist, but they can be prohibitively expensive or at times difficult to use. With the AeroMouse, we aim to alleviate these problems and make technology more inclusive. But what even is EMG? Well, EMG stands for electromyography. It's a technique that measures the electrical activity produced by our muscles by placing sensors on the surface of the skin. The core of our project is cutting edge blend of electrical, biomedical, and computer engineering. The design of our armband is based around a spe special configuration of electrodes, concentric ring electrodes. This category of electrodes allows for better spatial resolution while keeping the cost and radius of the electrodes minimal. While researching them, we found several different types of concentric ring electrodes, so we did a deeper dive into a few that seemed to fit our needs. We decided to experiment with bipolar and tripolar electrode designs, which had two and three rings respectively. We looked at two different sizes in each category, including an 8mm and a 16mm diameter. We also experimented with linearly increasing the spacing between the rings, such as in this model, and we also looked at a design that had constant ring spacing, but a widened outer ring. We laser cut these electrodes from stainless steel. So our first prototype relied on attaching electrodes to the skin with tape. We wanted to make this easier use, however, and have the electrode placement be more consistent, so our next prototype included an armband with elastic and a velcro. Here, we relied on just the pressure from the armband to keep the electrodes in place and in contact with the skin, but we found that the signal quality wasn't as good. To remedy this, we added a tape backing to each electrode on the armband and found that this significantly improved signal quality. Our next model was inspired by watch bands and crocs. We called this design Grid and Gibbet. It allows us to optimize the positioning of the electrodes during our research and design process. Initially, we planned to 3D print this flexible gibbet piece using a flexible filament, but we learned during the process that this compromised the integrity of the material, so we pivoted and chose to laser cut from a silicone sheet instead. The numerous positions available on this model allow us to easily fit the band to multiple individuals. We decided to use KD tape for the final model as it has been widely used in EMG research to attach electrodes to the skin due to its flexibility and for its adhesive material. It also helped us reach our goal, which included using accessible and affordable materials. Connecting the tripolar electrodes to the cytons served to be a little more complicated than connecting conventional bipolar electrodes to the cytons channels. Since the electrodes rely on the potential difference between center to middle and center to outer ring, we had to use the measured voltage of the center ring twice. We looked through the Cyton documentation, dove deeper into the individual chip specifications, and spoke with a group that had previously worked with the Cyton board, and came to the conclusion that we could split the wire from the center electrode to the negative inputs of two channels, connecting the outer and inner electrodes to each channel's positive input. This allowed us to take advantage of the Cyton's built-in ability to take the difference between signals. The final step is integration of Aramus components with a custom low-cost amplifier we nicknamed Tinny. This amplifier is designed to provide some of the same functions as common biosensing boards available, such as OpenBCI's Cyton board. On the board, there's an instrument amplifier for each channel, built-in hardware for post-processing of the raw signals, buffering amplifiers, and a microcontroller. These components work together to amplify, filter, and convert small analog biosignals into computer-compatible digital signals for any biosensing hardware, such as Aramis. Although we built and tested Tinny for a two-channel system, our biggest challenge was to expand the number of channels to integrate the board with Aramis, an eight-channel system. Unfortunately, the iterative design process coupled with shipping times and part shortages were unable to fully integrate this board with Aramis within this project timeline. Because of this, we decided to complete the system with the OpenBCI Cyton to develop the product to an end. Data processing includes pre-processing and feature extraction. We compute the tripolar Laplacian for each electrode using the middle and outer components of the electrode. 
The concentric ring geometry of these electrodes in combination with Laplacian filtering helps to identify the potential source with increased spatial resolution. Then we apply DC offset removal and bandpass filtering to eliminate low and high frequencies and increase the overall signal quality. To classify behavior based on these filtered signals, we then computed sets of features based on 200 milliseconds of sectioned raw data. These features were computed in real time and used to classify signals into various categories using machine learning, which Aiden will describe next. We initially trained a support vector machine on the aforementioned time domain and spectral features of the signal to classify between periods of rest, clenches, and snaps. However, we realized that that would take time to collect data and train a model for every single individual user. In the spirit of accessibility, we wanted to make it as simple as possible to perform standard computer functions. We took inspiration from Psionic, a cutting-edge prosthetics company, and used a threshold to detect muscle flexion. We experimented with different features and found that the mean absolute value of the signal was the best metric for consistently detecting clenches and snaps. We still have an option to train a support vector machine to classify between uh, clenches and snaps, which are then mapped onto left click versus right click to control the computer. However, we found that the threshold system works for most ordinary computer use, and it can always be easily recalibrated based on voltage variations between users and sessions of use. At the heart of our system is robust and efficient software, which interprets both accelerometer and time series data from the EMG armband and translates them into accurate computer control. In our main file, we use an LSL stream to get EMG data from the electrodes and hand acceleration data from the Cytons accelerometer. Each stream is fed into its own thread where sampling, processing, and GUI calls can occur independently. This optimizes speed and synchronization of the cursor outputs. Each thread follows a similar pipeline. Data is pulled, processed, and its output calls a change to the cursor, either movement or a click through the Pi Auto GUI package. However, moving the Cyton board inherently creates noisy signals and may lead to false positives. To mitigate that, when the cursor is moving above a calibrated speed threshold, the clench detection deactivates to avoid unintentional clicks. It was an interesting but complicated problem to work out the physics of using accelerometer data to estimate displacement in space and move the cursor correspondingly. We found that an elegant and user-friendly solution is to move the cursor proportional to hand tilt. This enables cursor control without imposing restraints on hand position or requiring excess motion. Lastly, this script allows the user to customize their experience with a command line feature to adjust sensitivity and timing to keep the spirit of accessibility and human-centric design. Now, let's look at the Aeromus in action. So here is the Aeromus armband. Firstly, the user will put on the armband and make sure the concentric electrodes are secure. After turning on the OpenBCI equipment in the LSL stream, we'll turn the Aeromus software on. Here, we see that the software has customizable functionality for sensitivity and timeout. Now we see that when the demonstrator's wrist tilts, the cursor moves accordingly, and in order to click, he clenches or snaps. Our aim is not just to create, but to inspire. That's why we will be open sourcing our project so that others can learn from it, reproduce it, and even build upon it. In our repo, we have in detail the specs for the Aeromus, a readme for setting the software up, and package listings for ease of implementation. When developing neurotechnology, it is important to consider the downstream consequences and ethical issues that may arise. We like to imagine that we are a company introducing a new product. Naturally, we want to maximize product performance and usability by collecting all the data we can. However, as users, we would also want to be sure the privacy and safe handling of our electrophysiology data. That is why we would securely store anonymized user data and offer an opt-in option to share data in exchange for compensation. As brain data is increasingly collected and commodified, it should directly benefit those who contribute and they should be compensated for the value they provide to the community of users. Additionally, an important but underlooked aspect of neuroethics is being honest about a product's capabilities and limitations. Our current iteration of Aeromoose can move around a screen and reliably click. However, it lacks the ability to scroll and the movement can be slow and choppy. Of course, no product is ever perfect 
and there will always be limitations that must be communicated so potential users can evaluate whether a given product is right for them. We appreciate your interest in our journey. We're excited to continue to innovate and bring accessible, user-friendly technology to all, as well as improve upon Aromas's current limitations. Moving forwards, we plan to decrease the cost of Aromas and increase ease of use through more efficient, robust armband design, integration of our tinny technology, and expansion of computer functionality to fill the niche of a computer mouse. Stay tuned! <laughs>